Hi everybody, welcome to Conscious Conversations. I'm your host, Katie Augustine. So I'm a shamanic practitioner, I'm an energy healer, I'm a transformation coach, and I'm the spiritual head of the Transformation Center, which is based in Westport, Connecticut. So in addition you know, to the individual private sessions that I do with people coaching and healing, we also have a lot of different classes and workshops at the center. And you can visit our website, and we're going to put up the contact info now so you can see. It's transformationcenterct for Connecticut.com. And everything is up there, the schedule for the events, the calendar, um, everything you want to know is right there. So check it out and, you know, contact me with any questions. We'd love to hear from you. And, you know, everything that we do at the center is really based and focused on helping you discover who you truly are, you know, develop that self-awareness. So then you can let go of, of who you're not and really tune in to your spiritual side. And that's, that's what it's all about. And, you know, create a life that you love. So we'd love to hear from you. Thanks for being here for Conscious Conversations. I'm very excited that today my guest is Matan Cohen Sutra. Welcome to the show, Matan. Thank you. I'm super happy to be here. I know. It's been a while. We haven't seen each other that much. Yeah. Yeah. Although I've known Matan, he's in our the same group that I'm in, which is the um, TLC, which is Holistic Health Practitioners Group. And it's really great to meet a lot of people that way. So what I'm going to do is read a little bit about Matan before we get started. Okay, so people can just hear a little bit before. Yeah. So then you don't have to tell them everything, right? All right, so Matan is a body-mind practitioner who helps people with stress, mindset, movement, and longevity. And we're gonna put up his contact information. Um, Matan's Movement is the name of it, yeah. All right, and his business serves groups such as corporate workshops and in the field of stress, Mindset, performance, and leadership. That's perfect for the corporate yeah. side of it. And of course, he does have one on one coaching of movement therapy and movement for longevity. I love that. Thank that, you. That's so important. I mean, I, can, I could, you know, use that myself, the longevity, <laughs> right? <laughs> totally. <laughs> and, and Matan also uses hypnotherapy and coaching. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to talk a lot about that. And this is where he helps people overcome trauma stress, anxiety, and limiting beliefs. Yep, there's those limiting beliefs. And then helps them to develop a mind that serves them, which I also love that. You know, one of my spiritual teachers used to tell us that it's so important to make best friends with your mind. Yeah. And I love that concept, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. I did not know about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but it's similar. It's similar uh, to what, yeah, to it's what you uh, do. You know, when I started, I didn't know that it's possible. Like, you know, it kind of, I took my mind as it, as it is, and I did not know that I can transform my mind and help, you know, help myself have a mind that serves me in my life. Right. Why should, why should our mind be in charge, you know? Yeah. It's really our heart and our soul that should be leading the way, in my humble opinion. Um, yeah, but before we get into that, I'm really curious because I don't remember how you really, yeah. how did you start doing what you're doing now? How so I was born in a family like that. You know, my parents were healers and oh, really? uh, yeah, they got it later in life, like when I was a teenager, I think. Okay. And uh, I had that idea that I'm going to, I don't know where I got that idea in my mind that I'm uh -huh. going to practice yoga. And uh, after I finished my military service, I traveled the world for a few years. You're from, you're from, you grew up in Israel? Yeah, I grew up in Israel. Okay, and you have so, to do the military. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I kind of, I checked different yoga classes and until like two years later, I found my first yoga teacher and he explained to me right away that it's a practice. It's not, a, you know, an activity that you go and you, you do it. And since basically then I have, I had a daily practice that used to be yoga for many years, meditation, then it turned more in, uh, to Qigong, uh, mm. Pilates, uh, Feldenkrais, many, many different modalities of body and mind, and I still don't know which one I prefer, if it's to do movement or it's to do uh, consciousness work. So I do both. Well, they work well together. And they work together. You can't really differentiate yeah. between the two. Because so. we hold so much uh, in our body, you know, the stress, the trauma, the 
everything is, if we don't deal with it, then it's stuck. At yes. least that's my interpretation. Is that Absolutely. And we have to address things in different way. Like everybody mm -hmm. has to, you know, I, it has to do many things in order to, to be balanced. So it's not just restorative yoga. It's also important to do some strength uh, training and mm. playfulness activities. Hmm. So, yeah. So you incorporate all of that. Did you develop um, or create like a um, like a class, a workshop? How, do, how does that work? The movement. Yeah. Movement, I just work one on one, and I coach. I try to coach instead of train. So if mm. I train, is usually people come and they f we fall to the same routine. That I prefer that it will not be the same. I prefer oh, okay. to coach them in their life, and then they. You know, they have some strength, they have some cardio, they have uh, reflection practices, they have slow practices, creating space in their body and all of that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. And then how does, so if it's a movement, but you also incorporate the mindfulness into uh, it? Yeah, oh. so that will be like more yoga or Qigong. If mm -hmm. I work with people of Feldenkrais, that it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's a slower movement mm -hmm. than, uh, than Pilates, let's say. Okay. Well, so then when did you start the, the hypnosis um, side I of it? I always did it, like, you know, it takes, a, uh, and you're always doing, like, people are always well, hypnotizing true. themselves, so, you know, and uh, yoga is a form of hypnosis. The real question is, like, what we're putting in our mind with these suggestions that we're putting in, because we're talking to ourselves all day long. That's so a good point. Do you think it's it's like misconstrued, the yeah. word, the term hypnosis? Yes. So it happens all the time, that state of hypnosis. Mm -hmm. uh, the, so to answer your question, I did it all the time. I had experiences of, of life-changing conversations with people that they mm -hmm. came to me after the conversation and they said uh, uh, that conversation changed my life. And I knew I was fascinated about it. I started about five, six years ago to l get full into that and really to understand the, how it works, like how that science art is working. Yeah, so to do it more intentionally. Yes, exactly. As, to do it as more intentionally. part of your practice. Yeah. yeah. So you went and just got some specific training and. Stuff. Yes, and yeah. I kind of you know the I. I was, I, I studied before the, even before that I studied more suggestion like relaxation and giving affirmation. Mm -hmm. However, what I was really fascinated is uh, to do it in conversation instead of doing it in uh, reading a script to a person. And I found it to be so much more effective than uh, to, uh, when you have a conversation with a person. Yes, you can do regression and, and the kind of closing eyes work later. Mm -hmm. but to really get the resources from from the person it's what's important because uh, we live in a society where we're making assumption like well what the issue is instead of asking question and uh, i think it's also very ethical because uh, who am i to give a suggestion to another person so the whole idea is to take what the person really wants what holding me, him back letting go of what holding him back and anchoring the behavior that he wants that will really give him what he wants in life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's about getting, um, communicating with the subconscious, really. Yes, absolutely. It's opening the subconscious. And, you know, I'm saying opening like it's closed right now, but it's not closed right now. Our subconscious is open all the time. We're, you know, like our consciously we're perceiving, I don't know, 10%, 5% of what's happening around it, but our unconscious, subconscious, our aware of everything that happens to, yeah. you know, to that, us. That's a good point, but it, it's like my interpretation, I guess, is that our conscious mind sometimes prevents our conscious, our unconscious from the communication. Is that? Um, yeah, it's very possible. True? And also, you know, our unconscious want to show us our limitations. Like, for example, if uh, money is an issue and you know you drive and you see a beautiful car and your unconscious will say like you said you're not that rich enough to have that uh, beautiful car yet so it's like we you know it's like the things that we we have to work on in life they keep returning like our unconscious brings it back keep bringing it back to our life oh so that's why we get triggered by that's why we get triggered you know it's like we don't get triggered uh, consciously we get triggered unconsciously and then 
and then we also we have the defense mechanism. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's why that's why I think working with a coach in any field or working with a hypnotist, I think it's way more important with hypnotists because it's things that we, we have triggers on them for so many years that we try to protect. We have, uh, I don't know if you notice that about yourself, but we have a denial mechanism to saying like me, I was, you know, I'm angry. No, no way I'm angry. So, uh, so that's why it's very important to, I think, to work with another person mm -hmm. because our mind wants to protect us. And that's like a defense mechanism that we all have from childhood. Yeah, and our minds are very powerful machines. Yes, <laughs> and uh, they're very powerful and it's very hard to, you know, to not to think we, when we're triggered, it's very hard for us not to think from the problem state because we are in a problem state. Mm -hmm. We're like right in the center of it at that moment. Yes. Yeah. Well, I guess that's why my, my teacher always said, make best friends with your mind because once you start to un understand what its issues are, then you can start to unravel it maybe a little bit and yeah. get 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 beyond it or I don't know how. It yeah, the thing is, you know, most of us uh, at times we're really so harsh about ourselves with our inner talk, True. and that's not leading us. You know, it's a it's a it might be a motivation that we got in a in a very young age to operate from stress and from fear, like thinking, you know, I have to go to work, otherwise I'm going to be in, in the street. However, we, there is another way to operate that it's from love and to say, I want to, you know, I go to work in order to create. That's uh, my mission. And it also pay my bills, but, uh, you know, to operate differently. Absolutely, absolutely. I think that if you're, it, it really does depend on where you're coming from. Yeah. How how it how it occurs for you, it it can occur as really enjoyable, like you're saying you're coming from love and, and creativity, or it can or it can occur for you as onerous. Yeah, but it's the same work. Um, it's the Possibly. same work. It's not the same effort. It's not the same effort. Yeah, it's like, you know, it's either, you know, we create a story that the world is uh, very dangerous and yeah. I have to work hard in order to survive. And I think, you know, this is the consciousness that most of the world is living in mm -hmm. or that the world is safe. And, you know, and yeah, the, the thing that I work on might fail and that's OK. I can rely on other people mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Or do something else. Yeah. Well, do you f do you get the, um, that? Do you believe? I guess that you know what thoughts that we put out there, then that creates our reality. Um, yes, yes, but okay. <laughs> you know, I, I okay. said the word but because uh, you know it's kind of it's a conversation that that's going. Our mind basically hears everything that uh, you know uh, that we're that we're speaking inside. Our unconscious mind is uh, is listening to it. Okay. However, not any negative thought that we have is going to happen. It's like, for example, a person with a panic attack is thinking, I'm dying, I'm dying, I'm dying, or something mm -hmm. in that way. It's not happening. Okay, mm -hmm. just the thought in our mind. Yes, that thought is not helpful, helpful for us, but in that case, yeah, he will die at some point in his life, but uh, not at that uh -oh. moment. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like... So it's uh, not literally at it's, that uh, Not literally. Yeah. So, you know balance with that like i think yes it's true it's effective the way we communicate to ourselves and all of it our thoughts but no not to not to take it uh, too seriously because then we're just digging deeper into that right you don't want to create worry and yes that type of yeah and we have a mind that is a master loves at, to, uh, worry. to worry yeah so yeah. it's either wor worrying about the future or having regrets about the past. You know, neither one is helpful because we're not in the past or the future, we're here. Yes. So do you teach people to, to be present and to... Um, do I teach? Yeah, I help uh -huh. people to or help be them present. to be present. Uh -huh. you no, know, it's, uh, and I think everybody has to develop like strategies that, uh, that work for himself. And also we have mm -hmm. to, ac to, to acknowledge that we live in a time that planning is very important. Okay. Mm. Like if you, 
go back to the times that we were the happiest, like hunters and gatherers, we did not have any ownership. We did not have cows, we did not have, you know, we did not have anything to worry about. And now the, the skill that we, that we need to, to thrive in this world is planning. Uh, so everything we do is involved planning. So mm -hmm. that's why I think it's also, it's kind of, we're in a disadvantage because it's like we say like, yes, be in the moment. However, you know, we all have agenda in life. So, hmm. like being too harsh about yourself, about being in the moment, you're wasting your time. That's, you know, mm -hmm. that's not going to lead to any positive uh, place because it's a uh, shame-based uh, right. behavior. Right. So, it's going to enforce the, the same thing, which is the shame, not the, the fact yeah. that you want to be present. Yeah, which is, yeah, no, it's a good point. It's about... Uh, you know, accepting where you are too. You know, yeah. I think there's nothing wrong with planning, but I guess what I was, you know, thinking more about was like the worrying aspect of it. Like, yeah. what if, what if yeah. this, what if that happens, you know, thinking. And, and a lot of times I think our tendency is to go to the, the negative possibilities yeah. as opposed to the, you know, positive. And, and I don't think that's helpful. It's not helpful, but it's a uh, survival base. You know, we call it a uh, negative bias, okay? Mm -hmm. Like we are got rewarded, okay, think about it this way. Uh, 500 years ago, your gr there was a party on the island and your great, 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 great grandfather said to his friends like, I'm not going, it's coconut seasons, they might fall on us and we might die. And they all went and had a great time in the party and he survived you know, for however you want to call it, for being careful, for being negative. So I think it's kind of, it's in the roots of our evolution that uh, that fear is supposed to save us. And I think, you know, I work a lot, a lot of my work uh, with hypnotherapy is around anxiety. And anxiety is many times like, yeah, I have fears. I have fears all the time. What I'm working on is not to suppress them. Okay, mm -hmm. that suppression, suppression of, uh, of feeling that what really creates anxiety. So the suppression of the fear. Yes. So what do you do instead with that? Mm, you let it, uh, you know, I, I, I combine different methods and I work and you know, there is a, you know, a whole, uh, whole environment around it. For the sake of it, I, I let it, uh, for the sake of our conversation, I let myself experience that. Mm -hmm. I let it move through me. I'm not trying to control it or mm -hmm. to manage it. I kind of I acknowledge it that, yeah, I feel fear. Yeah, yeah, well, I think that's a big, a big part of it is feel, you know, everybody says feel your feelings. Yeah. Rather than suppressing yeah, them. Yeah, you know, it's another slogan and it's yeah. like we don't, uh, you know, we don't learn it in childhood so much to, no. you know. No. But now maybe we're better at that, you know, we're going in, you know, in another extreme, uh, <laughs> I think. Uh, or not, you I know, it know. depends where. I don't know, we, we, we need time to see. Uh, but yeah, like we don't have that. It's like it's something, not feeling our feeling is a, is a defense mechanism that we developed at a very young age. I think so. It's I mean, a strategy it that worked for right. us. It, 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 yeah, we, I think we were, we were, you know, taught that too. We didn't just um, invent it as children. Yes. Your parents told us, you know, stop crying. <laughs> Yeah. You know, like, How do you stop crying? Yeah. Like, you stuff you know, it. You stuff it, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But you think now, uh, nowadays that kids are not being taught that so much? Well, you have, you have young children. I have kids, yeah. No, I think they learn how to feel their feelings, but uh, the language is very different. Like, I didn't, didn't even know what the word anxiety means until I was 18 years old or something like yeah, that. Like, yeah. my, my kids, they know it from, I don't know, from second grade or it's like they, they have all of this language that from one side is amazing from the other side it's kind of it's like everybody is, is anxious so it's kind of like kids wants to to feel related so yeah I have fears as well oh. so it's kind of a you know it can it can lead kids to develop develop symptoms in order to get attention because oh. People get attention and love for for these feelings, okay? So it might encourage other kids. Okay, yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah they want to be like everybody else and 
Yeah, right. But it's I don't know. I think putting they're they're both positive and negative. Yeah, sides exactly. To it. I don't pros think and that cons. you know it's yeah. like it's negative. I think that overall is super positive that we're exposing kids uh, into that at a young age. Yeah, to know that feelings are valid. Yeah. You know, because I think um, even anger, you know, so you're angry. That's okay. It's okay to be angry. You know, it's like to normalize them that everybody feels it. Yeah. But you don't have to make decisions based on where you are at that time. You yes. know, like react in a way that's going to cause somebody else to. Yeah, or it's not a problem. Like, you know, I've been told, you know, you're angry, go to your room and come back when you're not angry. Yeah. I'm still like, you know, in my 40s, I'm like, how do I still work that thing that I'm <laughs> un angry myself? <laughs> yeah, you know, and teaching, teaching the self-love component of it, I think is also really, really important. Yeah. You know, I mean, we certainly weren't taught that. We were always taught, you know, you have to do, so, you know, it's like, should this, should, you should do this, you should do that. Not like, look at yourself and what is it that you need? Yeah. You know? So I think it, it, it goes around. I hope our, I hope the next generation is a little bit more in tune with who they are. Yeah. I don't know. What do you think? Um, I think there is a shift. There is a consciousness shift in the world that, you know, like I'm seeing, you know, we're filming here in Westport. It's mm -hmm. uh, I see how the generations are changing. So they appreciate different things in life. And uh, obviously for older people, it uh, might be a little bit scary because it's not necessarily the values that we grew up, but I, mm -hmm. I see beauty in challenging the status quo. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So you have a, a, a large um, range of age in your, in your clients, right? Yes, you I work you from, you know, I work with kids sometimes. Most of my clients are, I would say, 50 to s and up or 40 and up. It mm -hmm. depends for what, for movement, it's 50 north, and uh -huh. for hypnosis, it's from 20 to 65 or something like that. Mm -hmm. So you've seen, you see different mindsets in different generations, or um, what? Yes. Yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I love to work, for example, with older people because they don't care so much. Oh. Uh -huh. Yeah, they're free from all of these things, like, you know, like, people my age that are worried about money and status and what people think about them. It's like, I think it's beautiful. The older you, you get, it's like, you know, you have less toys to play with in this world. Like, you know, all right, so you can have money. What can you do with that money? Well, right, and because we, we both live in, in a very um, fortunate area. Yeah. You know, right? Yeah, so so you, you work with people who who are fairly privileged in that regard. They uh, yes. However, you know, it's uh, we lose stuff as we age, okay? We lose some skills and we gain other skills. And, you know, we can be bitter about it or we can learn how in yoga we call it to discern and to see what's really important for me in, in yeah. this situation. Yeah, no, that's a good point. I used to, when I started aging, I. I, re I used to have a really good memory, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and now I don't so much. And at first, it bothered me, like yeah. I forget this, I forget that. But it wasn't like huge things; it's just little things. But then I realized, so what? You know, yeah. it's no big deal. So you just learn how to deal with it, right? You, you, yeah. Like now, I write things down, you know. <laughs> yeah. Because it's not. I mean, I don't want to say it's fun, but it, it's it has its rewards, like you said. Um. Yes, and the, the, you know, you, you brought a, a great point. The question is, why is it bothering you? Okay, the, the, the fact that you lose your, you lost, you're losing your memory, that's not the problem, all right? That's the issue, you know? It's like if you, you, you go deeper, it's about self-esteem and how others are thinking about me and how I'm thinking about myself, like, you yes. know, where the sense of love is coming from, if I'm efficient or not efficient, productive, not productive. Just yes. a memory. In which case, you know, you go to the supermarket again. Right. Right. <laughs> we, yeah, no, you're absolutely right. We make it we make it into something else. Yes. And that's the whole thing of having a mind that, you know, that is here to serve us in a way and in so many situations it deserves us because we're it can be so hard and not really give us what we want in life. Hmm. Yeah. 
No, that's, that, yeah, I see what you mean. It's like we have to find out what, like it's a balance, like you said. So, you know, if you hear yourself, um, that negative self-talk, then what's the first step? You, you listen and you... You acknowledge. You acknowledge. It depends. I think it really depends to where the, the person is. That's, you know, I used to work with people for a short t t term, like with hypnotherapy, like a session two, and now I kind of, I, I make it a little bit longer mm -hmm. because I think it's uh, it stages. So the first step is just to acknowledge it because it's a cycle, okay? It's like I will recognize that I'm uh, angry or jealous and I will get angry at myself for being angry or jealous. So. You know, just to understand that there is that cycle, that some somewhere along the way that, A, I'll start with that. I got a, I got a result that I don't like. I'm angry, let's say. And now let's trace it back. There was some thought that created a feeling, that created an action, that created a result that I'm not happy with. So I had that thought, like for example, I have to remember everything, okay? That thought came from somewhere. It served me somewhere in my childhood. You know, yes, that I have to yes. be sharp, I yes. have to be smart, and yes. that's yes. the way for me to survive and Re feed my family, yeah. and you know, really and like, important. people will really, really love me if I remember everything. Mm -hmm. um, so that served me. So I think, you know, like just honoring that energy mm -hmm. is the first thing because it's a, we think, you know, like we, we, con we don't understand what the problem is. I, you know, I you call it like the seven questions away from the problem. It usually takes like, when I work with clients to like seven problem, seven questions to get to what the real problem is. Okay. And then we get to the problem. Okay, and then the problem is not is is usually around something that is personal to us. Okay, it might be safety or something like that. Right, right. Okay. It's like w what's really underneath it. Yes. It's like what's real. Yeah, getting to the you real just issue. Keep digging down, digging down, digging down. Yes. Yeah. And then the unconscious like open up like what the real issue is because you know we have years of practicing of practicing of uh, yeah of practicing to repress that so it takes some time to open it mm -hmm. that's why I told you it's sometimes very hard to do it by yourself yeah so that's why we need a guide or yeah I you know I yeah. yes because it's no it, yeah. I think I think it's better to use a guide and uh, what what's important for me when I work with my clients is that I educate them mm -hmm. my educate my clients how to do some of the stuff by themselves. So okay. they're, they're becoming better at solving their own yeah. problems because, you know, we all get stuck all the time with things that bother us and we don't know how to let go of them. Yeah, so okay. it, it, it's just a new way of, of approaching things, a new way of being. Yeah, of really questioning, questioning. you know, ourselves to, you know, like that we can shift into a place that, uh, as, as we said at the beginning of the conversation, mm -hmm. that we have a mind that is really, really serving us. Do you think underneath that either our conscious mind or our unconscious mind um, really wants us to be happy and maybe that's not the best word, but balanced? I don't know if the conscious mind wants us to be happy. I think that, you know, if consciousness and our journey on this, uh, on this planet is about being happy. I believe that that wants to be happy. Okay, the unconscious mind in many situations doesn't want us to be happy. Think about, for example, a, a family trauma. Okay, mm -hmm. like the dad used to beat the kids and now the kid beats his kids. Okay, it's right. like a cycle that down. keeps yeah. repeating. Okay, yeah. so the unconscious wants to you know, to continue itself. It's kind of, it might create a sense of connection to the family. So okay. I work it with a lot of different, situations different that, motivations. yeah, so we have a saying in hypnotherapy called every behavior has a motivation. So let's say I'm getting angry right now and, uh, you know, yeah. I'm losing it. Yeah, yeah, All yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> so there might be a motivation. I might, uh, you know, I might, uh, fulfill the belief that I can be successful in this world, mm -hmm. that, you know, that I'm not worthy of success, that I'm not, uh, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. So every behavior has a motivation. Gotcha. 
Okay, and the motivation doesn't have to be good, necessarily. Okay. Well, this yeah. was really fascinating, Matan. We're going to have to wrap up, but thank you so much for being on this show Thank today. you. It's been a it's pleasure. Good to see you. Thank you to the Westport Library for hosting us, Verso Studios. See you next time. Namaste. Namaste.